Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the champion circuit for Paladins. We're here on Europe's turf for Saturday, and it's week three, so that means only a couple more weeks to go to see who will be crowned the victor and find their way with a free trip to High res Expo. But it's anything but free, because they got to work for it. My name is Ray Day, and I'm joined today by High res Pretty Hair. How are you doing today, Nick? Doing great. Ready to get back into the action now. For those of you that haven't watched uh, Paladins Esports Weekly episode number two, today's matchups will mirror last week's matchups. So these week three matchups will be the same as week two. And then next week, week four, will mirror week one. So we can go ahead and throw you guys over to the schedule just to go over what exactly those matchups were if you don't quite remember. It will be Burrito versus District 69 first. Then District 69 will play in the doubleheader against Team Viral. Viral will then have a doubleheader of their own, this time against Kings of the North. It's going to be exciting seeing both of the top tier teams in both sides, Europe and North America, facing off against each other two weeks in a row. So I think everyone's pretty delighted yeah. about that. And I, I know both top tier teams are really excited to get back at it against each other again after, of course, uh, some of them suffering the loss to their uh, what they consider maybe a, a team that's not as good as them. Yeah, definitely. These games are going to have some big implications today. Now, Burrito... Uh, can clinch pl uh, play today if they beat District 69 and then District 69 lose to Team Viral, Burrito will clinch their spot in the High Res Expo. So that's just something to be aware of going forward. But for this series, the first map of the day uh, will be over on that Frog Isle. It's uh, one of the Temple Ruins variants, kind of the less popular of the three, but nonetheless, one teams are pretty comfortable with. Teams seem to love it. They love all the Temple Ruins variants. And let's get into the game without any further ado, taking you through Burrito versus D69. Here it is on the side of Burrito. We've got Bird facing off as the Barrack. He's going to be accompanied with Thiel going as the Makoa. We'll also have Spunky on Grok. We'll have Sun Commander on Cassie. And then we will have Lazy on Ooh, Fernando. Spicy. Very interesting. That's a spicy meatball. All right, but for the side of District 69, will be Bugsy on that famous Drogos. Victor will be played by Gera today, playing the winner, which will be Shippa. Healing everyone up on that Ying will be Elven Path, and then Raining Death from the Skies will be Perdo on that Androxus. So immediately, Nick, this screams counters. It screams back Five, to the olden four, days of last week, three, where D69 were four, stubborn in their attempt to go to without go. a tank, and again, they do the same thing here, trying to out-damage the team of Burrito. They've, got, they've certainly got the firepower to blast through these shields. It's just going to come down to how late does this game go? Does the Wreckers start to come online and really be a factor here? Perdo going to be pressured out immediately here. Lazy into the back line, going to miss on that fireball, but he's poked out for the time being. And we didn't see these games last week go very long, and that's why Burrito had that advantage. But as Nick says, if it can continue, it could be in D69's favor. There's a first blood going down by Thiel. Bugsy does end up taking down Lazy, and Sun Commander, however, gets the return kill onto Perdo. So D69, although they've oh. attempted to get a lot of nice ice block from Sheeple, will come out go. and save her. And the timing from Thiel is perfect to be able to secure that kill. Yeah, very, very hard to do. I thought he was going to get him before he went into the ice block there, but slightly off the mark. But then he pulls off the even harder maneuver there, coming extremely out of that ice block. He's going to be able to pick him up. Sun Commander credited for the kill onto Perdo. We're about to capture the objective here. This one goes to Burrito, up 1-0. And again, Nick, this strategy doesn't pay off early. And why is that? Talk to me why this is a late game strategy. Because as these records start to come online for District 69, all this shielding for Burrito is going to start falling faster and faster. We're seeing Lazy kind of being that flanker right now. He's buying them a lot of time. But as we get into those record twos, those record threes, he's going to be buying them exponentially less and less time. And what happens also with the damage? Because will they be able to compete with the 69's damage if their shields are no longer saving them for the length of time that they are now? Definitely not. There are much more firepower on the side of District 69. But... All things told, the health pools will kind of balance that out slightly there. It's going to come down to who hits their shots. And right now, Bugsy's coming in with that Dragon Punch, trying to find a way to weasel in there, but was one shot. So Sun Commander was able to find the beat on him and take him out before he kills any of Burrito teammates. Fantastic play there, and it just goes to show that Burrito are prepared for this D69 strategy. Lazy Yo. all the way up in front <laughs> That's of what we're talking the about. members of uh, D69, so they can't even get out of base. So far, this is a very risky strategy that we have not seen pay off. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about a little bit with Lazy on that Fernando. 
you could see him just in the back line diving, spawn camping, blocking off their spawn with his shield. Doing that types of thing is going to work to start, but it's going to start to fall off a little bit more as they start to pick Point up these record twos. You see Gera has record seconds. one, Bugsy has record one, and was just picked up veteran. So what's interesting to me, Nick, is I'm, I'm looking at these cards. We're talking about this record strategy, but I only see two members on the side Five, of D69 picking four, up record. They've actually three, opted to go for Kronos, two, Haven. Yeah. Purdo's actually picking up Haven as well instead of record, which could be pretty valuable on an Androxus. Sure. Why do you think those decisions are being made? Do they not need it? They know exactly how much they need. They're not overplaying their hand right now. Everyone doesn't need record. Gera on that victor does a lot of damage the shield and Bugsy with Drogos does a ton of damage. His autos hit so hard and when they're scaled up with Wrecker, gonna be doing plenty of work. And now it seems like no one has even aggressed onto Thiel and the turtle with the anchor is pulling anybody who gets near him down. 835 health is enough to stay alive, but for how long? Bugsy's on his tail, but the Makoa, the big turtle, will somehow stay alive for the time being and heal back up. Unfortunately, doesn't have veteran available to him right now. Lazy, though, just doing such a good job holding down District 69 in the back line. A great hook onto the high ground is going to pull Elven Path off. Perdo gets nothing done with his cursed army. Here comes the barrage, but Lazy's so tanky. Dodges one with the drought with the uh, charge there. Dodges another, just strafing. And he gets nothing out of that. And Perdo is almost able to go down. So Lazy's been the backline de dealer of damage that D69 have wanted but not been able to put together yet. So kill it's, it's pretty amazing. I'm not sure if he's gotten a kill. Let's, Let's take see. a look. 0 and 5 right now. Shippa 0 and 4. And Gera 0 and 4 right now. Elven Path 1 and 4. Bugsy the only one picking up kills right now. This is a struggle right now for D69. So you got to help me get into the mindset of D69 here. I know what they're going for, but last week we saw them go for it and it didn't work. What is the reasoning that they continue to go with this despite having any evidence that it will work? What, what's going on in their mind? Maybe they thought through this map they would be able to abuse it a little bit more. Obviously, they're well practiced. They know what they can pull off. It's tough to say what the call exactly was here. We can pull up this giraffe. It looks like Burrito had the first pick picked from Fernando, and they answered back with Drogos Ying. And then Burrito picked Barrett Cassie, Evie Andro came out for D69, and Makoa Grok was the final two for Burrito. So they left Makoa on the table. They did not want it at all. So it does seem that they just had this intention at the beginning of the round. Now the push will get a little difficult unless they can get some frontline pressure like Lacey to force out the backline dealers. But now it's seeming like the issue is getting in at all with so much damage coming out from D69. Makoa pull is great, but it's not enough to secure any damage. And Purdo and Bugsy, oh, the Androxus and the Dragon are on top of it. Yeah, right now, like we mentioned, this is a snowball comp. So Burrito should be winning right now. Whether or not it should be 3-0 three, three to zero is uh, left up to interpretation right now. But as the game goes on, we're seeing District 69 starting to stabilize a little bit. This is only going to grow more and more in favor of District 69. Right now, Burrito finally getting their respawns back or pushing back in to try again. And it looks like Sun Commander's also having a, a good game for himself. He seems to be able to be in the right spot using the dodge roll there nicely against the wall. So he doesn't put himself out in exposed territory to be killed, but he's actually just getting the bonus damage from his incitement and allowed and allowing himself to be able to set himself up for another quick roll after that. The most important thing here, Nick, is that they haven't really been able to focus on the one person who's dealing quite a lot of damage from range, which is Sun Commander, and is that something D69 needs to adjust? It there's looks the like they're adjusting a little bit here. Here comes that grenade out close. from Mr. Guerra right now, taking out the healing totem and poking Sun Commander very low. Ship is going to go down here. If you can time it right, he will, and the, finds the blast shot on the payload to take him out. Lazy just hiding in the corner, but the veteran is able to top him up. District 69 are responding, but the picks continue to flow through. Sun Commander doing so much work right now. Lazy in the back line as well, holding everyone, letting him do his work. Here comes the lockdown. This is big for Burrito. They could get it here. They are, and they are going to close out map number one here, four to zero. That's... It. That is all she wrote. D69 don't even have a chance to get to late game because this game finishes in what felt like under six minutes. In fact, under eight minutes in total, including the entire process. It is a quick defeat for D69. And Burrito take a clear victory in game one of the set. The most interesting thing that I wanted to mention to Nick about, and he kind of extrapolated on, but the heat of the battle got us there, was that Sun Commander went 21-1, and one, pretty much uncontested. And though he was the sole damage dealer, it was impossible for D69 to take their eyes off of Lazy, Thiel, 
Bird, and Spunky, who had so much health and sustain between all of them that their focus onto the one person who was dealing a ton of damage from range, who, range, who could counter them, was limited. And so that was one of the things that I think played really well into the strategy of Burrito, keeping that lone damage dealer yeah. kind of safe behind all the front line, but also what I think D69 probably could have done a little better at. Now, they didn't have um, really that, that pressure coming out of Shippa on that uh, on that Eevee there to right. pressure out the Cassie, and Cassie's the perfect pick to kind of be that sole carry, you know what I mean? Yeah. She can stay back there. She has no damage fall off. She can stay in the back line perfectly safe, content to just fire arrows all day long. And uh, all things told, I don't think D69 can let Burrito get this snowball comp because this is what they were just steamrolling them with last week. Right. I yeah. mean, it, it, that's to me where we start getting into decision-making beyond your skill at the game. It becomes this matter of fact where Draft you just matters. feel that your drafting decision is better than theirs, despite the evidence. And that's where it's just, is this ego? Is this, I mean, what is this going on? Because we've seen no evidence. They've seen no evidence. There has to be something underneath that we don't know that's making them make these decisions. Yeah, Burrito, very, very good and content to pull off that snowball kind of comp there. And they're going to be having to see if District 69 are going to make any adjustments or let them just run it back. And game number two will be played on Serpent Beach. So, again, this is going to be one of those Temple Ruins variants here. This is something all teams are comfortable with. Any sort of comp can kind of work on this. There's nothing really special or pocket pitch we've seen come out just yet, but today could be the day you never really know um, because things are starting to get tight here in the champion circuit as we are past that halfway mark. These games are really starting to matter. But without further ado, game number two coming at you. And there it is. Without hesitation, they decide to pick things up differently. They didn't wait two games this time. D69 is already adjusted. Bugsy will be on the Fernando. Perdo will be on Androxus. Elven Path will be on Buck, which he loves to play and has been very successful with in the past. Sheba is playing the Grok. And then you're going to see Jera on the Cassie. So a lot of uh, roster changes for D69 at this point. Definitely going a little bit more standard this time. Bird will be playing that Barrack, interestingly enough, for Burrito. Sun Commander going to be playing that Ying this time. Deal going to be on the Makoa once again. Playing the Dragon will be Mr. Spunky. And rounding things out will Five, be Lazy's four, Eevee. This is uh, three, this is two, his, I feel like, almost one. number two. Maybe not his so personal favorite, but this is something his team has him play very often alongside that Kenessa, very, very renowned on Lazy uh, is this Eevee. So he's going to be the one to watch right now. Already blinking in, finding one poke shot onto Elven Pass Buck. And watch him look to be aggressive going behind Perdo. Really nice reactionary reversal, but there's so much damage coming out. Lazy's picking one up, Spunky's picking one up, Thiel's picking up another. To be honest, I think the biggest decider of these fights has been Thiel's hooks, and he's been so clutch at them. Lazy's going to look for the blink. It's all about timing here. What can he do? He's going to worm all back oh! in the air. Oh, God! Lazy takes down Perdo. That was master class right there from the Winter Witch. Oh, my God. Absolutely perfect timing there. Very close, actually. If Perdo hit that shot, he may have went down. Actually, he had Aven, so he was okay with 650 HP coming out of that block, but he was very close to death. There was no room for error in that fight, and, of course, Lazy making no errors. And it's nice to be lazy when you've got your teammates like Thiel coming to back you up because that means they cannot keep focusing on your low health pool as Eevee. But there it is. Bugsy finally gets the kill. And Jera's on the backside looking to help provide some damage as 94 points have already been ticked on the side for Burrito. So D69 may have a hope here if Jera can find a little bit. But it seems like it's not going to be enough. And he's going to have to fall back and retreat and give this one up with Burrito looking to take the first point. This always happens. Every time there's a Barrack Ying on this map, we never really talk about them until, like, people start to get picks. Lazy went down, and then D69 finally have a chance of getting at the point, but there's four turrets and four Ying clones there, and they're just like, <laughs> right. whoa, whoa, never mind. <laughs> right. And then, and then it's all of a sudden they've got all these points already accumulated because all these fights are taking place, yet Barrack and Ying just sitting on the point so well, being able to join the fight when needed and then teleport Rocket Boots back into the safety of their turrets and their points. 69 have got to find a stabilization play here right now. Here comes the Dragon Punch. Elven Path cannot afford to get taken out. He will probably get out of range, but it will be Shippa to go down. District 69, Elven Path going to fall as well. Burrito just continuing to roll. These respawns are so staggered right now. Bugsy going to have to be the one to stabilize here. His shield is falling. He's running into the HP pool right now. Less than 1,000 health. He will go down. Burrito continuing, continuing to roll. And the turrets do not lie. They keep staying 
and healing up this dwarf, and it cannot be any better for Burrito or any worse for D69. He's just getting kills, he's staying alive, he's healing up and providing so much pressure from at range and up close when targets get marked, taking that extra bonus damage from him. Bird and Theo are unstoppable right now. Add Sun Commander in the mix with Ying, and man, this is sounding like a good one. Theo going, getting that triple kill there on the Makoa there, stealing three kills away from his teammate. Just kidding, buddy. <laughs> Doing great job there to close out that push. They didn't have to pop any ultimates. How many do they have still on the board? We got Lockdown. We got Illusory Rift. We got Ancient Rage. We got a lot of tools left in the toolkit for Burrito. District 69 having a Cursed Arm of their own. They have a Buck Wild. Uh, Tempest is certainly going to be available, and Immortal looks like it will be up in this fight as well. But And we can't discount the value of the Tempest. Grok being able to heal his allies, Definitely. keep them moving quickly in this type of close-range team fight where you have Barrick and Ying on the point. That could be a game-changer if he hits that right in combination with Bugsy being able to kind of roam freely and not be taking much damage during that time. So it could be some scary ult combinations coming out from District 69 here. Bird's going to be going into the high ground, drop Dropping a turret here, Thiel looking for that Cassie, but unable to find it. Just going to return to his teammates. Here comes the lockdown, though, from Burrito right now. Ship is so low. That's going to be a long ghost walk. Thiel's going to get in, in here, popping that Ancient Rage. But here comes the combo. Evan just mentioned the Tempest in combination with the Immortal. is going to heal up a lot of District 69. Thiel needs to be careful here. He is a little bit separated from his team. Now they used all their trump cards, and they survived. But slowly and surely, they are going down one at a time. So it was almost like just a delaying an eventual demise versus going down right away. That was a great timing of the ultimate. But by that time, the fight had already been lost and it was really not in their favor to continue going. It just didn't work out for them, and it seems like everything is going the way of Burrito at this point. Two points on the capture, 74 points taking 77 now for them, and behind the back, as if it could get any worse, adding injury to insult. He's going to take down Fernando, the Spaniard, your brother. God, that's got to hurt. Uh, it's my shot at my family here. <laughs> Overtime now for Burrito here. They could go up 3-0 to zero here, and it looks like it will be just that. They will capture the objective. Nice long-range hook. Landed from Thiel, and they're able to capitalize on the kill. They're taking Elven Path. This is exactly how last round went. If they're able to continue to find these snowball picks and not let District 69 get stabilized as 5, they will convert. Nick, here's the question. As the payload pushes, we've got a little bit of downtime as D69 looked to try to stabilize here and Theo finds a little spot to hook some, some people. Is Makoa the best tank in competitive right now? The way Theo is playing him, I am not seeing anybody be more impactful in team fights than with Theo getting pulls onto carries and just absolutely setting his team up to annihilate them. I mean, personal opinion, I like Makoa better than Fernando. I like the play style. It's more proactive. It's more skill shots, more rewarding for me to play. Uh, that said, I, I don't think I can say that he's better than Fernando. I think their jobs are slightly different, but they both do them very A+. And I got to say that's a good, fair assessment. Fernando provides a lot of sustain. Makoa does not have nearly the amount of sustain. But in talking about the ability to focus targets, we talk about this in so many other games. If you can get everyone doing the same thing, you're combining your powers by five. And if you can just set up that clear target, which everyone just needs to attack, and this FPS, Makoa has some of the best and most dangerous CC, that's crowd control, in the game. That's right here. So District 69 stabilizing slightly here behind the shield of Bugsy right now. But on the high ground, Kara is on this Cassie trying to get something done for his team. All five members of District 69 have respawned. This is looking bad for Burrito here, but here comes the Dragon Punch. And he's coming. He's looking for one. Spunky does get the kill. On to Birdo. Now he's falling back. There's the lockdown from Barrack. He seems like he has something to do. Sun Commander's there supporting his Barrack as usual. But it looks like Lazy and Theo are cleaning up the battlefield as well as Sun Commander on to Jera. This could be it. An ancient rage from Makoa. Birdo's there, but he's going to be the last one standing. And that's going to be the kill for Burrito. The wipe Woo. on D69. And they take two games to zero in this best of five set. God. Damn here, bitch, or burrito is <laughs> rolling right now. Like, what do you even do? They did making you accidentally cuss here. I had to, I had to, <laughs> I had to sneeze there. Just to, I'm allergic to. I don't even know what's going on. District 69. They did a good job. I like the adjustment they made. They kind of fell back a little bit, right, to get grouped up as five. But there was just the ultimates available for burrito. I feel, I feel the uh, the dragon punch landing there 
a lot of good things. A nice Ice Storm came out from Lazy as well. They were just able to continue to find these picks, even giving given the chance that District 69 stabilized. I mean, let's talk about this as well. You see some commander uh, chilling. 28-0. and 0. Chilling. No deaths. <laughs> uh, and when he played as Cassie last game, he was something near 20-something and 1. So he's not – he's basically between Immortal two games – had one death, and that is a sign that they are not being able to allocate their damage properly. They're not being able to do what they want to do, and I believe that that's because plans are being interrupted. It's getting that email that sends you back to work at night when you thought you were already done for the day. Thiel is coming in with the displacement that is taking Purdo, taking Jera, taking Elven Path out of their routine. So when they were diving Sun Commander, when they were going after Lazy, they got dismantled and put in a horrible position and that's what i absolutely love about the way that burrito are playing against this heavy damage comp even when they start adding tanks it just seems like burrito and specifically theo is just doing his job so well that they can't get to the back lines they've shown both times now lazy on the fernando in the first game have shown that he can be that kind of jack of all trades yeah. on the tank but in the back line doing the damage it's like right. what can't these players do on any of these characters at this time it was Thiel in the back line doing the damage as the tank but they have the perfect comp like we were mentioned on the point Ying and Barrack just sitting there for two clones two turrets just chilling out Sun Commander I wish he had a damage taken set because he was just he just seemed like he was just chilling <laughs> that might have been just, zero two <laughs> just just the whole time just yeah in the back line keeping everyone topped up 61,000 healing in an eight minute game unbelievable yeah. that is actually outrageous as a stat so we'll take you over to check out what we're going to be on for Game 3. Nick can walk us through that. Yep, so it will be Timber Mill. Um, the way the map picking works, I've explained it a couple times here, but we'll go ahead and mention that after Game Number 2, it is loser's pick. So Burrito got the first pick, which was Frog Isle. District 69 actually were the ones that elected to go uh, for that Serpent Beach here. So the next match will be played on Timber Mill. And this is kind of an interesting map, especially with Kinesa thrown into the lineup here. She's There's a lot of long sight lines on Timber Mill that can make her very dangerous here to be picked up or let go. Well, let's get in the game and see what the teams decided to go for. Bugsy, he will be playing the Drogos, which he's very comfortable with and is very successful with. So this is a good pick for him. Purdo still on the Androxus, and he likes this champion and has been very successful as well on him. Sheepa. Prioritizing taking the Ying out of Burritos and Sun Commander's hands. Elven Path still on the buck, very consistent, and Jera will be on the Barrack. So the Ying Barrack combo comes to D69 this round. That's right, we'll have to see if they can get it set up. It will be Sun Commander once again on Cassie, bringing it back from game number one. Bird, gonna be the one on Kinesa this time. Also a very, very notable Kinesa player. This is We have to watch him. We'll ride along with him, making sure we catch all that action. Lazy gonna be on number two bay, Mrs. Evie today. Three, Spunky going to be two, on that Grok. One. And then rounding things Threat out will be will Mr. Begin. Thiel on that Fernando. So what's really interesting to me is that they go for the pick of Kinesa, but then they pick up late. Uh, they pick up Eevee as well. Why do you think they did that, Nick? Uh, being able to pressure D69's backline is going to be just as important. <laughs> Getting to that Ying, pressuring her out, making sure that she can't just be 28-0 like Sun Commander and pressuring out the whole team. D69 is taking the fight in a very good spot, though. Bird has no sightlines on any of them. They're all fighting in this little back flank here, covered by the map. Beautiful, but here comes Steel to clean things up. Whether he's on Makoa or Fernando, he's heating up the battlefield, and now he's chasing D69 off and capturing the first points of the huh. game still towards Burrito. So very interesting, and one thing to note is Lazy is still alive, so he's been terrorizing and doing his fair share of work up on the upper battlefield and now getting out to safety and distracting some more. But 30 points already for Burrito, and as Theo rotates, somebody else comes in and takes his place. Beautiful play. That's right, Theo just pressuring out this Ying Barrack right now. Doesn't want to let anyone get on it. Another thing we forgot to mention, Lazy on this EV. It's a great pick just to take away from D69. So they can't pressure out that Kinesa. They can't get that hard backline dive. They need to give room, Bird room to work, and it looks like they're doing just that right now. But D69 are taking good fights away from Bird's line of sights right now, so he hasn't been able to get a ton done. So it's basically saying, yes, we know that Eevee's the best counter, but we're actually going to use her as well because that will not only be great for one of our best Eevee players, we're just going to take it away so you can't oh, counter baby. Bird. And the snipes come out. They're real. Bird knows how to play this champion, Kinesa, and he's looking for the air snipe on the Bugsy. Is he going to get it? If he peeks out, it's going to be dangerous. Oh! Somebody else is going to take him down. Jump See shot. you later, Dragon. Go back to your cave because I'm here with Kinesa. 
I don't know if Sniper ever beats Woo! Dragon, but in this God. case, he got the better hand, and oh. that was a jump shot to remember, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to transport up, continue this streak. He's still got more in the tank, and he's looking for Sheepa. He's got one. A nice teleport away. He's going to do it. He's eliminated Sheepa with the help of Spunky, and what a play by the Sniper. Yeah, Bird showing. He can show up just as big on this Kinesa, popping that hen hunter, getting some more poke here. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Bugsy on the high ground here, but Pear Doe is going to combine with him, taking him out. Everyone collapsing on Bird. Cannot allow this Kinesa to roll any further. Lazy finding a nice air shot onto Bugsy, taking down that Drogos here. Just three kills now for Burrito. Four kills now. We're inching ever closer. Minute 23 remain here with only 10% of the push remaining. And what a play, however, by Lazy to use that ultimate. It was a solo ult, but Nick, he used it because he knew that if he just got the kill on the Androxus, oh, it snowball, would stagger baby. and snowball. So he goes for the solo ult, not saving it for this round, but he's got 30% already built back up. Very smart play by Lazy, who's just showing Man. why he's one of the best. Burrito looked unstoppable today. Up 2-0 to zero in their third game. Already up two games to none against District 69. Not a lot of ultimates available for Burrito, just the Immortal. District 69 going to have almost everything seconds. available here, and they are going to have to use and find value in every single one of these if they want to get their Ying and their Barracks set up. A very quiet combination last round. Yeah, very quiet. Five, it didn't seem to have the four, same impact as three, Burrito two, and had it on their one. team. But again, you're saying, Burrito, maybe they're just at another level right now. It seems like D69 are not the same. But I can't say it's because they're playing poorly. Maybe it's just because Lazy, Bird are making these insane plays feel. They are just doing so well that it's impossible to say one is worse. And there's Perdo in a bad spot already. He's oh, going to get eliminated no. so early by Sun Commander. This is what D69 has. This is their last chance. They're They've got up. to find a way, and they're split up. And Bugsy, he's isolated with Lazy, but he's going to fly away. And Lazy's continuing. He wants this dragon. He wants him down. And who's going to get the better of each other? Oh, my God! From Lazy is going to secure. Cure it all, Nick. Somebody, it's not even a favorable matchup. It's just somebody stop it. I just, just stop Dude, the game. It's not even a favorable matchup for Lazy. Buckwild gonna be popped on Elven Path, but Lazy's gonna take him out. Go into the ice block, eat the absorb. Lazy right now, just going in. Very gonna fall to Pair Doe. Here comes the Tempest from Spunky to keep everyone healthy, and Burrito just continue to roll. You cannot outplay someone who is so dang good. It is just impossible. It doesn't matter how good you are, you cannot outplay. EV air shots from a distance like that. It is unbelievable the amount of control and awareness of the map that Lazy is demonstrating here. Spunky on the top floor as well, just providing some excellent consistent damage. And here's the Bugsy going in for the Dragon Punch. He's going to secure one kill, Nick, but is it going to be enough? It's not, as the objective is finally captured for D69. Yeah, so D69 starting to find some big picks there. Perdo coming through huge. Ultimate's paying off. A great lockdown. A great Dragon Punch also, because we just saw the Ghost Walk come down from Grok, so Bugsy knew that was his moment, that was his time to shine, and he took it. He really did. And now there's two minutes left. What is Burrito looking to do, Nick? How, what are they trying to do here, now losing this capture point? Kind of a 2-1. It's probably the closest we've seen both games so far in terms of stabilizing here on this map. Well, for starters, they're going to look to defend here, obviously, because that will still grant them a defense point. It looks like they are doing a great job of that. Picking up four kills right now. All the respawns having to come through for D69. Shippa able to answer back on the Lazy. But he's got nothing to do. He has to fall back, wait for his teammates. Like I was saying, though, Burrito able to get a point here still if they're able to defend. Go up 3-1 and close things out with one more capture. So Burrito, they're kind of okay. They're kind of chilling, right? They're okay making, right now. They're making all these hot plays. They're like, Lazy's on fire. We got Bird on fire. We're feeling okay. We don't need to do too much or overcommit. Yeah, that's not what they needed, though. Feel going to go down early in this fight here. This is D69's chance to snowball with that frontliner down, that protection. It's going to help uh, speed up what D69 can do. It's not going to, Feel's not going to be there to slow them down right now. Lazy trying to find pop shots into the back line. We'll find one. We'll find two. We'll get that healer. No more sustain for D69. That healer is gone, and now Lazy's got free reign. He's taking down his primary target, but he wants more. Perdo up on the balcony. Oh He's going to get it, and the ice block is there. It is impossible to stop someone playing at this level. You can see see, ladies and gentlemen, watching back home, this is absolutely top-tier play coming out from an absolutely top-tier player. One of the best in the world. Lazy, remember the name. He is showing why he has this, this consistent conversation about him, no matter where you see or mention Paladins.
Yeah, gonna go into that ice block here. All five members of D69 have returned. They will take down Lazy to start this fight. This is a huge pick. D69 have 30 seconds. They got one, maybe two more chances at this push here. They need about 25% of the way to go. Here comes the Tempest. Elven Path gonna get in there with Buckwild, trying to shut it down, but he will be pressured out by the Flame Lands. Very unfortunate, too, because uh, Grok's immunity hit there, so he wasn't able to finish off the kill. Although he they're just gonna leave him. He popped his nah. ult and they're just gonna leave it. They do not want to go so and get death. They low. know they can't get there. Burr gets Burr, the kill. Baby. Everyone from Burrito right now is firing on all cinders. We're talking a lot about Mr. Lazy right now, but La or when Lazy dies, Bird, Sun Commander are there to fall back. Spunky's totems are perfect every time, keeping Mr. Thiel topped up and healthy right now. It's just such an unstoppable when they're firing on all cylinders. Well, we just talked about it, right? Spunky. I mean, the little things. Getting away from Elven Pass ult at that moment. He pops his ult. He wants to get the kill one shot away. The ghost walk around the corner, forcing him out, and then Bird cleans it up. That type of teamwork is so valuable and it's showing why Burrito is just dominating these games. One next point will push it into a win for them. And this time, Burrito have a lot more weapons than they did in the previous round. They have Scout, they have Headhunter. This is a very dangerous Five, alt combination. Bird four, is going to be able to land three, everything two, with that global four, vision. Lazy has the Ice Storm available to him. The Tempest will not be available for the first fight, but Immortal will. And also looking at Sun Commander, who's been with the Cassie, we know he hasn't died a lot. He's going to activate the scout. This is amazing, Nick, because he got the combo with Kinesa. That's right. They are going to be very, very split up right now, though. Bird going to find the first kill in this point. The Immortal is going to be forced out, but Lazy's coming in with the Ice Storm there. Elven Path going to take down Theo Bugsy. Going to drop Lazy here, and this fight is looking good for D69. D69 finding what they needed. Bird's still up there. Sun Commander as well, but now Jera's really exposed. And Ice Shield's going to absorb some of that damage, and Bugsy and Elven Path are going to jump down onto Bird. This is what they needed. 22 points taking up now on the side of D69, and it, be, yeah. it looks like Elven Path is continuing to zone. I didn't like that fight from, from Burrito there. They felt so split what up. What went it, wrong there? It felt like Thiel and uh, Spunky on the Grok were so split up. Lazy was on the other side taking 1v1, which is fine. But Bird and Sun Commander were sitting up on this roof right now without really any any vision to shoot out anyone. And there it is, looking at this. There's a lot of damage on the EB, to be honest. He, a nice jump to get out of there by Elven Path. I'm impressed by that play. They're not easy, especially with the Sniper going after him as well. But he's oh activated God, recovery. Healing. He's gotten away. Oh. This is fantastic play by Elven Path. D69 finally tick it in. They've got another point on the board, and they will have the opportunity to push and potentially tie it up this Dude, round. that double Ying clone and the recovery from Buck were able to sustain him through Bird and Sun Commander just hauling off. Off on him. That was insane right now. Elven Path going to continue this wow. pressure. Finds Steel on the high ground, trying to take down that Fernando, but he's very tanky. That's going to take a minute. Well, fantastic movement, though, by Elven Path. It's not easy. You have to hit that absolutely perfectly as Buck to hit that jump and land. As you saw, it was almost close to see if he was going to make it, but he's very familiar with this champion. He loves this because he feels that this is the counter to Kinesa. It hasn't necessarily worked, though, but now Elven Path seeming to get in his rhythm. He's going on to Lazy. He's going to slow. He's going to do a lot of damage with the Heroic Leap, and Bugs is going to help finish it off, but Thiel is there to clean up Elven Path as well. So Bird's still sniping on this corridor, being very, very stubborn and not allowing D69 to pass without yeah, getting snapped. Bird and Sun Commander really don't want to leave this this little area. This is the best positioning for them to be in. Bur Burrito wants to take the Try fight here. Run. They don't want to take it anywhere else. Headhunter's going to be popped right now. Perdo not showing his head, though. No one from D69 available for Bird to take down. Uh, Perdo going to fall there eventually. The Tempest on the low ground, though, is going to be hitting a lot of targets. It didn't look like he was going for the kill there, either. It's, I, it seemed like Lazy was low, and he was trying to keep Lazy in the fight, so that damage could sustain. And like you mentioned, so strong from Grok, played by Spunky, to just have that heads-up play and Bird hitting these shots. Oh. We can't imagine it, Bugsy. Watch out, buddy. There's Elven Path. He's activated the ultimate. A nice transporter will get him out of dodge. And Elven Path is actually going to go down, potentially. He's going to jump around. Bird has his number, but Elven Path gets in, gets out. It seems like nobody was better or worse in that engagement, except Elven Path now has no ultimate. Yeah, Bird getting the better of that trade, all things told. Finding a lot of damage right now on the high ground. Perdo going to just hide behind these boxes, not going to poke his head out. Does not want to chance it against any of Burrito's snipers, much less Bird. Theo going to confirm on to Lazy, or er, Bugsy on the low ground. Lazy going to pick up Shippa as well. District 69 just can't get anything going with Bird and Sun Commander dug in so hard. Well, how do you get out of this? I mean, what do they do? Is it a champion draft at this point? Do they have any champion? Buck, it Buck seems wild. like, is the only. That was, that was their best that's shot. That's their only shot. 
That was their, not their only shot, but their best shot. Bugsy could bust things up here with a Dragon Punch. Elven Path really needs to be the one to kind of get in. Receives. Wow. The adjustment's trying to come out, but Paired Doe just gets his head blasted off. Nothing but the boots left from Androxus. And now the push is continued. Lazy is taken down by Sheepa. And Bugsy went around the side, but Bird had already anticipated that and transported to the other ledge. It is going to take down. The push will be unsuccessful, and Burrito will hold off and stave off a right. tie, keeping it two to three, forcing D69 into some more pressure. Burrito need to, they need to take a beat here. They need to take this point. They need to end it right here. I don't want to see D69 nice starting to pick up momentum again. Burrito, they want to try and close things out here. Uh, D69 are also on uh, game point right now. They can yes. capture and convert, and they will take this game despite being down so heavily early on. Bird is seconds. picking up bulldozer, though, strangely enough. It seems like he's going to really prioritize getting Sheba's clones yeah. away. And that's how you really counter that. We're seeing Bulldozer come back into the meta a little bit, being a great counter to easily and quickly, and especially as a Kinesa from range, deal with Ying's clones. As we follow along with the sniper bird looking to find his position. He's got master riding, so he'll get there before everyone else. One big snipe is going to help turn the fight, especially if he finds it onto someone of a lower health pool. Lazy's there to follow up as well, and that's just a terrible combination. Androxus Prudo is dangerous, but there's the dragon punch coming out. If Bird could spot him, he might hit him in air, but he doesn't. And so far, no one has been able to get to the sniper yet, but there's Bugsy. It runs out just in time. Oh, my God. That scared me even, Bird. Having the presence of mind to transport onto the low ground right now. Bugsy is so low right now. Anybody putting pressure on him will take him out. Shippa not going to fall right now. Nice headshot onto the clone, though. Bird uh, not being able to find that kill. And still, 5-4. to four. No one has really fought on the point. It's all about, can we kill the sniper? And they do. D69 looking strong there. Bugsy still alive. And now this could start to snowball. Purdo, Neil. All getting kills, Perdo and Bugsy as well, and now it looks like D69 have taken control. That's what they wanted. Once the sniper was out of the fight, it became something they were comfortable with moving. And D69 really making some great adjustments here to be able to win these team fights against Burrito, who have been dominating thus far right now. Just pressuring out Bird has been so huge for them. They're finding the first bloods in the fights are huge. Perdo goes in. Right now, trying to get onto that Kinesa once again. 76 capture points in favor of D69. Immortal is going to come out there, but Bugsy picks up Theo. It didn't come out in time. Lazy able to answer back right now, but he needs to get on the point. No, it will be D69. Tying it up 3-3. Three to three. Tying it up. D69 are not giving this one up without a fight. It just seems like things are almost there. The push has been so hard with how well Bird and Sun Commander are playing. And if they can let Bird get set up, which he already has, it's going to spell trouble again. They haven't found a way to get past this stolid defense that Burrito had put together. But Perdo, he's got other ideas. Nice. It's the headshot versus the reversal. What's going to take place? And Bugsy, he comes from behind man. and he gets the kill. They're making such good adjustments right now. Bugsy and Perdo, realizing what happened last round, go in immediately take care of the problem at its source, taking out those high ground snipers there. And D69 are rolling already past the halfway mark on this push. It's only a minute and 40 seconds left. I mean, it just it feels like the push just started, and they're almost at the conversion point. Keeping an eye on that, there's the ultimate coming out from Lazy. Spunky is here, though. Lazy gets away with just a little bit of health, and he takes down Sheepa, and this could be a firm hole by Burrito that's going to force D69 into a bad spot and allow oh. Bird to get set up. And just as oh, we mentioned God. the name, he's there to change the game, getting the kill. Onto Elven Path. Yo, shout out to Spunky though, hitting that slow buying bird, that split second. It was blast perfect. off Elven Path's head before he got around the corner there. Really nice play, even under pressure from Burrito right now. These 69 respawns are starting to come through. Bugsy's gonna poke his head up and take some heat for it right now. The headhunter is available here, so Bird looking at him to go huge in this next fight. Go and huge. The, the headhunter is available, so the huge plays could come out from the sniper one time. She sees the opportunity. Uh, she could go in and eliminate the target. Lazy, however, is there. And combining, Nick, the pressure from Lazy and the sniping oh long range. God, what a bro. shot from bro. Bird. <laughs> it's just so hard for D69 to do anything. And again, this defense is unstoppable. Bird with the double kill. And it just feels like there's no way around it. Yeah, but this is not going to win games. Burrito have to find an answer in this next round. If they make this hold here, which it's looking likely at this point, 20 seconds remain and still about 40% of this push 
uh, remains to be seen out of the 69, but Burrito have been losing the capture point fights. They need to find an answer and win one of those if they want to close out the set. D69 have a lot of momentum on their side right and now. And again, it, it also does feel like Star Commander's kind of been like the four, person everyone's forgot three, about. Two, it just feels like he's been one. able to be there and just it's shoot. Cassie, dude. And it's Cassie, and she's just doing so much damage on top of everything else. And Purdo's going to be focusing the Knessa. If he can get one down, he's going to try and do it. But now Bugsy and Purdo, because they've got Bird down, they're going for God, Cassie. Dude. But Lazy helps out. Spunky helps out as well. And that will be a successful defense on the side of Burrito and a kill. <laughs> from Lazy on the other back side of Androxus. Yeah, so we'll take a look at some of the tools in the toolkit, and they have been saving. That's why the trigger discipline is coming out. Every ultimate is available right now. Wow. Sparks will fly in this next team fight. Well, what do you expect to happen? Considering we've got these ults, we got the Buck Wild, so that could help maybe take down the Knessa. We've also got uh, Ying, so that area healing, if Buck gets really low, Ying can be able to support him no matter where she is. The Accursed Arm is a great choice. What do you expect to see in terms of this flow? It could be anything at this point everything is available like we mentioned there i want to see burrito stick together use these very good Five, synergistic four, ultimates here with the the three, global vision in combination two, with the tempest one. the immortals but at the same time d69 just have to keep doing what they're doing a couple aggressions come out there at the last seconds they have to pressure bird and sun commander out on the high ground a cursed arm is a great answer but wild is a great answer and master riding's put bird in a great position he's already got 1400 damage off on to the team of D69, and now it seems like Spunky is doing his job on the point, and Bugsy is out of this fight already. Sun Commander and Bird on this upper ledge seem impossible to get out, and there's a try and run. It's perfectly timed. He's gonna take down Jera. Beal's gonna help him out with that, and there is the Grok ultimate to keep Beal topped off. The damage comes out from Bugsy, but it's not enough to get a secured kill onto the Sniper. Here comes the Immortal and the Dragon Punch. He knows that they're vulnerable right now. Comes around the corner, gets Spunky. That's it. No more sustain for you, Burrito. Bugsy flying around, but it's Lazy able to find the shot, taking him out as well. Deal is so low right now. If the shield falls, he will as well. But it's Sun Commander on the high ground, finding the shot. Shippa able to clean up three. But the lockdown is coming through as well here. This fight is tooth and nail right now. D69 currently in control of things. 37 points in terms of Burrito's favor. And now 31 points for D69 and building up. Time is ticking, as Sky would say. But it's Drogos' day as he takes down the Sniper, and that's huge for D69. However, Sun Commander has still been forgotten about. He's gotten a lot of damage onto Elven Path. It's a duel that can mean so much to the events of this game. Sun Commander with the dodge roll. He's going to try and find damage onto one. He does connect with Sheepa and Perdo as well. He's going to dodge roll off and force Perdo away. And here's Bird, Bird's who's going to clean him up. And this could have been the game changer there. Now it's Spunky back on the point, and it's 59 closing in onto 68, 64, and counting. Elven Pass so low again is one shot, but Burrito are doing such a good job peeling for each other. And when someone's low, another teammate is there to pick up the mantle and continue the pressure right now. And it will be Burrito 97. They will convert. They will capture the point. Close the game. Close the set. 3-0 over D69. Wow. Jesus. What? I love watching these teams, dude. These, these, these teams are insane. They're so good. There's so many incredible performances. But to me, it's <laughs> Dude, just... <laughs> I love it. It's just, again, I, you know what the theme we've seen. Here's the theme. Lazy and, and Bird having fantastic games. Thiel as well, 30 and 11, so much pressure. Highest credits on the team, 76,000 damage as well. Um, but the 61,000 shielding. But Sun Commander, only five deaths. Everyone else is in double digits. Yeah. D69 I, could not dude. focus on the Sun Commander. We saw in that last fight, yeah. he actually got... Uh, three, four kills in a row without anyone doing anything onto Sheepa, onto Jera, and it was just absolutely consistent damage, 75k that they just let fly. I think it's just like the psychology of Cassie being so, the bow is so quiet I find, we kind of forget to cast Cassie sometimes, Yeah. even unless she's getting, the, unless she's the one getting the quadra kill it's, her damage goes unnoticed in a fight I think because it's so quiet Right. And some commander are using that, I think, to his advantage here. <laughs> 29 and 5 right now, 75k damage. But Lazy Boys, 41, 14, 8 solo kills, 108,000 damage. Nothing. Normally, that's hard. Evie, Evie, that Evie is because hard. of her pokey nature, doesn't oftentimes have that ability to get top damage because she doesn't really get 
a lot of I, I say pokey, but she doesn't. She goes all in to try and get kills. She's not the one just firing from the back line getting sure. free poke damage. Yeah, you you might even expect the way Sun Commander was played with so much more uptime that he had in Lazy. Look at twenty nine and five uh, that he was actually able to get more damage as a Cassie with that consistent pressure from range and really no fall off, but. It just seems like Lazy was playing out of his mind. We saw a couple of those plays. They were exciting to cast, and they were incredible, I'm sure, for you watching at home to see. And so that is going to wrap things up for this set. It does go the favor of Burrito. If you've just been joining us, the two juggernauts of Europe have clashed again, and Burrito have been successful over D69. So the storyline is continuing to unfold. D69, a lot of pressure on them now. They've got to go ahead and yes. win this next one. Otherwise, Burrito clinches. Absolutely right. So we're going to take a quick break right now, but we will be back in just a second to bring you this action that is beginning to have drastic implications down the road for the champion circuit outcome.